Hi there, my name is Mariah Martin and I'm a real estate agent with Remax Real Estate in Allentown, Pennsylvania. We cover the entire Lehigh Valley area and that consists of both Lehigh and Northampton counties. Today we're going to talk about seller's property disclosure statement. What is it? Um, and I'm going to use some notes I have here in my Remax folder and uh, make sure I don't forget any important points to go over with you. The seller's property disclosure is something that you should be interested in and in asking your real estate buyer's agent um, when you're interested in a property. When you go and see properties, if you're interested in it, then you should ask for the seller's property disclosure statement. This is a seven page document uh, that looks just like this and if you're looking at this video on one of my blogs, you're actually going to see a link to the information. Uh, so you could actually see a copy of this. If not, certainly you can email me or contact me and I can get you a copy of a blank seller's property disclosure statement. Uh, this is a seven page document and when you're working with your real estate agent, um, you should make sure, excuse me, that was a net. <laughs> you should make sure that the date at the bottom of the seller's property disclosure statement is an updated version. And the most recent updated version is uh, 2000, February of 2006. The reason I say this is because the information that's requested on this um, obviously is very important and on later versions you're not going to get all the questions that are on this version. One of the biggest parts of this document change was uh, s number seven. It's uh, additions slash alterations. So it goes over all the additions and alterations that were done during ownership of the property and that's one section that would not be on later versions of the seller's property disclosure. Um, this document is required by law and um, the information that's on here is it will educate you about what has been done while the seller has owned the property. For instance, did they replace the roof? If they did, um, was uh, the existing roof material removed? Uh, information about termites, uh, are, do they have knowledge that there's termites in the property or do they um, currently have the property um, uh, under a pest control company being treated through a pe pest control company? It will go over structural items and questions about what type of uh, water and sewer they have. Was there any kind of repairs during in this um, during their ownership in this area. What type of heating system and air conditioning systems do they have? What type of plumbing system do they have? Um, what type of electrical system? And that's going to be really important. Normally when you're looking at a house, you're looking at the floor plan, the location, you're excited about looking at room sizes and things like that. When you get a little more serious about looking at a house, you're going to want this information. Some of this information that's disclosed on here will be very important. For instance, um, if, it's, if the electric service is fuses or knob and tube wiring, those are things that you're going to want to consider um, because um, homeowner's insurance will not cover a house with fuses or knob and tube wiring. So you're going to need regular circuit breakers in order to get homeowner's insurance. So some of this information is very important. Um, that's pretty much it um, on the seller's disclosure. I'm just going to go over a couple notes here and make sure that I didn't miss anything. Um, Oh, all questions must be answered on the seller's disclosure. Um, since I do represent buyers and I do not represent sellers, um, more times than not, I'd say eight out of ten times, I find that not all the questions are answered. Now, by law, the seller must fill out the seller's disclosure. And obviously, if they don't fill it out completely and then their seller's agent doesn't go over the seller's disclosure and make sure everything's filled out, that information is then given to the buyer's agent and um, some of that information may be missed. So when you're making your offer on the property, this is something that's going to have to be signed off by you recognizing that you have read the seller's disclosure. And the seller's disclosure is not meant to be a substitute for a home inspection. Remember, this is just to educate you a little bit more about what the sellers have done while they own the property. Um, also, you're going to find that the seller's disclosure statement may not be available on an estate property. 
Um, an estate property is uh, a property where the owners are deceased or incapable of signing the seller's disclosure. So um, you may not have the uh, seller's disclosure available to you in a situation like that. Also in a foreclosed property, um, you may not have access to the seller's disclosure either uh, because the, the current owner in a foreclosure is the bank. So the seller is no longer available or living in the property um, to fill that out for you. Um, also, this the seller's disclosure. Excuse me, the seller's disclosure applies to pre-owned homes, um, not new new construction, um, because the seller has never lived in the property. Obviously, it's newly constructed, so it doesn't apply. So hopefully this information has helped you and now you're a little more familiar with, with what a seller's property disclosure statement is and I look forward to sometime in the future helping you with some other information regarding purchasing a home in the Lehigh Valley area. Check back to my site often or my blogs. I'm uh, constantly updating information. Thank you for your time and watching my video. Bye-bye.